We have two magic numbers to pay attention to in the markets and some economic catalysts coming up that absolutely require our attention. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education, and a boy said to his father, Dad, what is that wiener dog doing wearing a white coat? And the dad said, that's a doc, son. I'll give that joke the stamp of a Dr. Stock original. You're welcome. The two magic numbers. We're going to look at the SPY and we're going to look at the Qs and talk about the numbers that you must pay attention to because man, oh man, I think it really does make a huge difference. We're also going to cover the economic catalyst coming up next week and the free stocks from Moomoo where I do my options trading, uh, my Patreon where you can see my buys and sells among lots of other things, including my options course that's over there. In the meantime, guys, I do want to get into, well, let's actually start with the economic reports and then we'll get into the numbers with the charts. So let me put this back up here for you. So here I have trading economics for you. I like it because it's clean, concise, and I have no stake in this company, but I do like just showing it here. So we have a Chicago National Fed activity. We're going to be watching that for any signs of contraction, as well as D Dallas Fed manufacturing. The more, the more weakness that we get out of that, the, the more evidence of contraction. That could be worse for the economy, of course, and that can point towards recession, especially with the Fed keeping the higher for longer. As they stay at restrictive levels, that's something that we want to pay attention to. And if credit continues to tighten, that can put further pressure on the demand side of the economy. So we want to be paying attention to that. So on to Tuesday, we get Red Book for inflation, that same store as inflation. We'll see if we come in near that 3.6 that we had last time. Or if we come in strongly above it or strongly below it, that is a slightly volatile measure. So not a big thing. House prices. Let's move on from there. On to Wednesday. On Wednesday, we get some durable goods information. I expect that we're also going to see some more contraction there. As you can see, that's also the consensus and the forecast. And then also our our energy prices that we have. Are we going to see supplies continue to decrease? If so, decreasing supply could mean increase or, or increase in prices if demand stays constant or if demand increases, then you get the really sharp increase as well. So supply and demand would both have to drop in order to see uh, those prices ease a little bit. Let's move on from there. Here's Thursday. Here's the first really big day that we get. So we get the, the GDP stuff, and I think that's not going to change much from what we got. If we get revised downward, that's some softening, and maybe the Fed can let, light, lighten up a little bit. So that can actually be a little bit of softening, could be bullish for us. So we want to watch for that at 830. Initial jobless claims is the big one. This is part of what roasted us yesterday in the markets, that the Fed already came out on Wednesday and told us that we're going to be uh, two rate cuts higher than what we were expected to be. We're going to get two rate cuts of 25 base points instead of four. That was not great for us. And the initial jobless claims coming in at just almost even with 200,000, not great for us. You can see trading economics forecast that be 205,000. If we drop below 200,000, expect more red to be coming our way. If we are strongly above that, as a matter of fact, when we start to see about 300,000, I think that we'll start to see some upward pressure on the markets instead that we start to alleviate that. But we don't want to tip the scales too far in the other direction because that can be a negative catalyst. So moving on from there, we get some PCE information and the consensus and forecast you can see uh, for PCE, 2.5%. For core PCE, 3.7%. And that's something that the through core is de most definitely what we want to watch uh, and compare with that summary of economic projections to see if it comes in around where the Fed expects that we want it to come in below to be upper pressure on the markets because that would give us further inflation information from that. So Friday is the next big day that we get. We get personal income and outlays. And part of that, the huge part of that is the PCE that we get, which right now for core is expected to come in at 0.2%. If that comes in that way, then I think the markets are going to react favorably to that. That some of just the worry that would go along with that would really help out. A spike in energy prices does not bode well for those PCE prices. So we're most definitely going to be watching that. We don't have consensus yet on this. Now, mind you, core PC is X food and energy, but energy still finds its way throughout a lot of the, in, the inflation measures that we get anyway. So a decrease uh, in energy prices, decrease in inflationary, even in core Although it may be a little bit less, so not as direct as what we would see in the regular PCE prices that you see, which are expected to come in at 0.4 and then 3.5 compared to the 3.3 that we had last time. And then core 4.2, the forecast right now from trading economics is 3.9. I'll do my workup on that and I'll report on that next week. So we're going to want to watch that. And then the last thing here, Michigan consumer sentiment. Uh, we This is just the final. It's not going to change much from what we had before. So that is what we have to look forward to. The biggest things. Initial jobless claims, absolutely enormous to watch that come out. Below 200, rough. Near 200,000, still going to be rough. Well above 200,000, I think when we start to see like 230, 240, 250 is where we actually start to get some levity or some upward pressure on the market. But possibly enough 
to give us a nice little near end of week finish in the markets. And then PCE, the personal income and outlays, consumer spending also being part of that. We most definitely want to watch consumer spending, see if consumer is slowing down at all. And then from there, the PCE, the inflation measure that we get, we want to see the softening there as well to, to kind of turn things around on the markets for a little bit. All right, let's put up Mumu here and we'll take a look at the charts on this. So we're going to start off with SPY. So we're going to track the S&P 500 here with this one. There we go. So you can see the path that we were on. Let me zoom in. Here's the formation that I had, which I'll leave it around for a few more days. And then pretty soon I'll get rid of it because it served its purpose. Now, what we're really caring about now, this magic number, here's the first magic number for you. That first magic number is 430. We break down below that line. We have we have a fair way to fall. So that would actually set a really good, solid new lower low. And I think that the path is downward from there, possibly down all the way down at this 200 day, all the way down at 415. So this would be something that three to 4% that we could fall from there is most definitely something to watch for. As a matter of fact, by the time we get there, it's probably going to be between 415 and 420. So we'll, we'll watch that. I think 3% to fall from here could be a very realistic thing to watch out for. And so I don't want to be doom and gloom about it. I do want to capitalize on it. And I've talked in my previous videos how to capitalize on falling markets, mostly through the options. And so we'll move on from there. So $430 on SPY. Pay attention to that. That's the magic number. That's what you want to be watching for. Let's look for QQQ. There we go. For QQQ, that magic number. For this one, if we go all the way back to this value that we have right here, that other magic number is 354. Should we fall below 354, that would be a new lower low, and that would most definitely be able to send us down significantly from where we're at right now. And I still think this 200 day, which right now sits at about $327, I think it would be up from then by, by the time that we got there. So that number then would turn into more like 336 or so. If we do move up that far that fast, it might be more like 333, I think might be another number to pay attention to uh, for tumbling down there. So from, let me see what I say, 354 down to three, let's call it 334 for easy math, six or 7% in the NASDAQ, that would be quite a give up when well, NASDAQ 100, I should say when we're talking about the Qs. So those are the things that we want to be on the lookout for. Now, mind you, if we go up above 360 on this, that can be very good for us that we start to kind of go sideways for a little bit longer and that we don't actually tumble down through. So it is possible that we get a good bounce today and that we don't see those numbers as soon or possibly even at all for a little while longer. So that softness, by the way, is where opportunities are created. And I can tell you that it's much easier to trade and profit off of strongly trending markets because then you have a direction to go with. So back in 2021, when we were very bullish or throughout most of 2023, when we had strong bullish movement, it was very easy to make money in those conditions. However, when the market started trending downward in 2022, that was something that, well, if you were working on making money on the way down, well, that was strongly trending again, you were able to capitalize on that. Or if you weren't able to yet, well, then that would be something that, you know, kind of took your portfolio down with it. Although on my channel, I talk a lot about how to survive in any market conditions. So if you want to see about that, let me put uh, the cues back up here for you for a moment. So this most recent strong trend that we have possibly developing here that we are going to continue downward, those strong movements, that is where that money can be made. And what the way we do that is through options. And where I do my options, I do my options through Moomoo. And I told you about the link down in the description for that, we get up to 16 free stocks. And this isn't just a plug. This is actually where I do my options trading. And they have an options analyzer tool, options calculator. They tell you about profits, losses, break evens, you name it. And they have advanced option strategies. And for your deposit levels, here's the free stocks that go along with it. Buy it up to $2,000 a piece. That $5,000 deposit level gets you a free share of Tesla or Google. So take advantage of that. My buys and sells I post daily over at the Patreon. That link is also down in the description. I got lots of stuff over there, including stock price prediction for NVIDIA. I'm gonna put up my new one for Tesla very soon. And then moving on from there, I have my options course that I'm building out right now. So if you don't know anything about options, from the very beginner, that's exactly what's up there right now. And I'm just about to get into the application side of thing where we start putting those options to work for us. Now, mind you, those options are already working for us through over at the Discord, which is through my Patreon. Like I said, that link is down in the description and we've capitalized on the way up and we've capitalized on the way down. And I continue to keep on pushing to find out the different opportunities, sharing it with everybody. They do their research, due diligence, and they decide whether or not they want to join us in that. So for the market coming up today, we could possibly get a very good bounce. And it's something that, you know, we can enjoy that little bit of green allows us to reposition, replan. And then we start looking ahead to next week to see where exactly we go 
with the markets. I do anticipate next week that we'll experience some more red, possibly see some new lows. We can have saving graces on Thursday and Friday. We just need to watch the initial jobless claims. I think that's going to be one of our biggest catalysts of the week because the Fed is watching jobs like a hawk, a hawkish Fed. Anyway, and then the other thing besides that is what we get for the inflation report on Friday. Those two things have the power to either turn us around or turn us down. We're going to have to be watching for them. Guys, come and join me over at the Patreon. You won't be sorry. The community that's over there in the Discord, they are wonderful, astounding people, highly passionate about finance. Also, don't forget about your stocks from Moomoo. Moo. That link down in the description. Sign up for that. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning, and we'll see you in the next video.